In this video, we will see some of the basic uh, device configuration features that PCA bus offers. So uh, the main capability of PCA bus is the plug and play capability. So what this means is uh, once the devices are plugged into PCA slots, little human intervention is required to configure or set up the device for its functioning. Okay. So uh, PC software essentially take care, takes care of uh, device initialization and setup. So in case of uh, device initialization, the there are many things that the device needs to tell the bus or the uh, system that it's going to interact with, like uh, what are its I/O capabilities, uh, what type of device it is, is it is it a serial or parallel device, then uh, what are uh, its uh, various uh, parameters like uh, buffering and things so that uh, are communicated to the PCI bridge or to the PCI software using a configuration ROM that are present within the device interface. So this is one of the major feature of uh, PCI interface that is uh, all the devices which supports PCI interface either input or output should provide for a configuration ROM in the interface which contains the values for the various parameters for the device. And uh, so it means that the user need not manually set the configuration parameters or inform the system manually the configuration parameters of the device. The device automatically communicates it to the PCI bridge. Then another feature of uh, the PCI interface is it also provides for a ROM to store initialization code for the device. That is uh, with each device uh, there is a provision for a ROM. Okay, uh, that can contain a code which needs to be run before the device is actually put to use. So that code, that facility is also available in PCA interface. So it means that uh, these two features, this configuration ROM and the initialization code ROM, both are actually taken care of by the software itself of the PCA and there is no need for human interaction. Then uh, in total, the PCA, PC single PCA village can scan 21 slots or initialize 21 devices uh, that supports PCA protocol and for a uh, higher number of PCA devices what we need to do is we need to have PCA to PCA bridges uh, uh, and uh, like that the hierarchy goes on okay so that is one of the major uh, problems with normal PCI protocol or PCA bus uh, we need we need to extend it at the bridge level okay then uh, in case of PCA there is a four level interrupt scheme or four lines are assigned for interrupt processing. Okay. Now, uh, any device that uh, requires configuration, right, or any device that is first inserted into your motherboard through a PCI slot, it needs to be first identified and recognized by the PCI bridge in order to initialize it. So, during initialization step, uh, PCI bridge needs to refer to that device using some method. Okay. So, uh, the scheme followed is an internal addressing scheme used within the PCA bus. Okay, so PCA bus is effectively a bus topology controlled by a PCA bridge, right? So that bridge will address individual devices based on uh, a scheme, a uh, local addressing scheme, and that is based on this uh, initialization device set signal. Okay. So uh, this initialization device, uh, device select signal, uh, it uh, actually appears in various devices in various pins so like that 21 uh, types of arrangements are possible in a single uh, PCI bridge for instance uh, consider this case that is this initialization device select signal right uh, it can appear uh, in the AD lines that is address data lines uh, from bits 11 to 31 okay so suppose that we have a uh, what a device that is connected that is the first device of the PCI bridge Okay, in that case, that uh, for that device, the initialization device select signal from the PCI bridge can appear in AD level. And if another device is connected, then for the second device, that signal, initialization device select signal will be appearing in AD 12. Okay, so the PCI locally actually addresses this device or recognizes this device like this. Device, connect device with uh, initialization device select signal uh, in AD 12 line or the device with initialization device select signal in AD 11 line like that the PCI bus can electrically identify the devices okay and uh, this happens only during the configuration phase or when the system is initially starting up or a new device is installed at that time 
electrically and locally the PCI device or PCI bridge can identify these devices. Okay, so like this, as I told you, uh, a single bridge can address 21 different devices. Okay, and uh, uh, and in order to configure the device, uh, what this PCI bridge does is it will send a configuration command through C bar B line. Uh, so that is a command bar byte enable line. You know that it is of four bit size. So a configuration command will be placed in that line and along with that uh, ID cell signal will be uh, sent through appropriate pin. So suppose that I need to configure the second uh, device uh, present in the PCI bus. So what uh, this um, automatic setup will do is uh, it will send the appropriate command for configuration through C bar B line and along with it will activate ID cell signal in AD 12 line okay, in order to refer to the second device. So that is how this automatic configuration of uh, devices in PCI bus happens. And uh, once the devices are configured uh, locally within the PCI bus and when they are ready to be uh, used, they should be assigned a system level address so that uh, it can be part of normal IO operations or system level calls. So for that, uh, there are two provisions available. One is that device can be assigned a separate IO address uh, belonging to the IO address space. Okay, and uh, you know that uh, this is port based uh, IO mapping and it requires separate uh, commands like in or out like that. Okay, so either the device can go for that or the device can be assigned an address from the memory space or it means uh, the device can choose for memory mapped IO. So uh, this happens only after the configuration of device is possible. So initially during configuration we have a electrically uh, designated address and after configuration we have a system level accessible address. So this is all about uh, PCA configuration.